Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a Project Rusty video, but it is not just any Project Rusty video. It is the 1500 subscriber, which was supposed to have been the 1000 subscriber Project Rusty video. Okay, so change of plan. Now the original video I had planned, we were gonna do the radius arm bushings and the springs, kind of like a big thing. I don't have the springs yet, but I do have the bushings. So we're gonna do the radius arm bushings on this video. And then later on, like closer to 2000 subscribers, we're gonna knock out the shot or the springs. We're gonna knock out the springs. So you see the stuff on the table here. We are in for a hell of a day. Um, all right, I got the shop manual here. This is going to tell us our torque specs and our procedures. So what we'll do is I will do it the way that I understand it to be in the book. Then we will come back, read the book, and see if I did it right. Either way, it's getting done. This is the part you're going to need for this job. And... You're going to need two of them because there's only enough in these bags for one side. So, we'll get through that as we go. Okay, so let me explain why we have to do this. Uh, 2014, I was driving this truck to work. And it started to shake and shudder like you wouldn't believe going around a turn. Well, I thought it was the uh, ball joints. So, I changed the upper and lower ball joints that didn't help so then i went ahead and uh, put shocks on it that didn't help started looking at everything and i happened to grab this wheel and i rocked it like this i had it up in the air and i just kind of pulled back on it and the radius arm started moving i also found parts of my bushing on the on the ground so I got looking into it. I'm missing an actual rubber out of this bushing. That's why it's shaking. A word of caution. This has to be done. Both sides have to be done at the same time. Or, yeah, they, they both have to be done. It's kind of like doing brakes. Uh, there is a difference, however, according to the book. The passenger side has a cup on it. I can actually show you that cup. I don't understand what it's for, but uh, let me show you what I'm talking about because we're going to be under here quite a bit today. All right, so I don't know if I've showed you this, but welcome to the underneath of my truck. All right, so this is the radius arm bushing. This is where it lives, okay? It's basically like a uh, sway bar link where you got your spacer, your rubber, or your your washer, your rubber, your spacer, and then on the other side, you got another rubber and a flat washer, and that's basically what makes it up. But if you look on the other side, it looks like either they've got a cup on it, or I'm missing the front bushing. I'm not sure which. But uh, according to the book, on the V6 model, there's supposed to be a cup on that side. This is the four cylinder model, so we should be okay. I'm gonna do a bonus for you, and I'm gonna do this in two separate videos. So this video is gonna deal with the driver's side, and then the next video is gonna do the passenger side. That way, if there is a difference, we can spot them, and then you'll know what to look for when you do this on your truck. Now, this, except for, well, let's see, after we get the springs done, I've got one, a piece of steering to finish up and then all the chassis will be done on this truck then we got to do the body mount bushings because these bushings are shot uh, we got to do the body mount bushings and then we've got to do the interior and the paint so we're almost completely done with rusty it's been dragging on because i haven't had time to do anything with him so we've got to get that tire off we got to get our jacks in position we're gonna have the big jack under the frame and then the little jack's gonna go under the control arm because part of this job requires pulling the spring out. 
So we got to do that. You might notice I'm later on when it warms up and I get my jacket off, I'm wearing my uh, limited edition Puddin's Fab Shop S10 shirt because we're working on Ranger. And if anybody got that joke, you're probably laughing hysterically right now. So uh, let's see, we're going to get our jacks in position. So let me get that set up. Uh, we're going to probably end up pulling the brake caliper on this one. We're going to have to see how low that uh, lower control arm goes. If it gets to a point where it's going to start tugging on our hose, we're going to pull that caliper off. So, enough talk. Let's get this party started. See what we're doing. So, I've already blocked the wheel since uh, my parking brake don't work. That's also on the list of stuff to get done is get the parking brake fixed. In my defense though, the parking brake has never worked the entire time I've owned this truck. But I'd like it to. All right, we got it on the transmission. Well, actually, you know what? Why don't we back that idea up? We're not gonna put any kind of stress on that bushing. We're gonna go ahead and go straight to frame on this one. So if you move just a little bit to the right of that cross member bushing, there's your frame at the lowest point. We'll go ahead and put that right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our carpet dropped so we can go ahead and get that tire loosened up. Before we jack this up, we need to get under there and loosen up that radius arm nut. The one that's underneath the uh, truck right there. We need to get that loose now while you still have weight on it because I got a feeling since the torque specs are about 120 foot pounds, that thing's gonna be a bear to get loose any other way. So let me go grab some uh, pine saw, otherwise known as croil. I'll give that a quick spray, figure out what size that socket is and we'll get that loosened up. So I'll be right back. Okay, now it's time to play everybody's favorite game show. What size is this nut? Okay, so we have in the contestants row today a S and K one and inch one and one sixteenth socket, twelve point. Don't you dare blow me up in the comment section on that one. I am fully aware of the rule. It's the only thing I got over here. We got an inch and a quarter from the Cobalt Company, otherwise known as uh, Lowe's, and I've got an inch and an eighth snap on which uh, is probably older than I am. So, let's try the inch and sixteenth. Nope, let's try the inch and a quarter. Well, no, okay. Let's try the uh, inch and an, uh, let's see, inch and an eighth. It is none of those. Wow, okay. So what leaves us for options then? It's not an inch and a quarter, and it's not an inch and sixteenth, and it's not an inch and an eighth. What is it? Because inch and a quarter is way too big. Inch and a sixteenth almost fits it, but doesn't. It's got to be just like a skosh bit bigger. And of course, inch and an eighth. That fits loose. Uh, one inch would not work because that's. Let's see. Well, we can give it a try. We'll give the inch. No, I don't like that feel though. I don't like that. Let me see if there's something else in my arsenal. And I shall return. We're narrowing it down though, that's the important thing. Well, it looks like the inch and an eighth is gonna have to work for right now. But what I'm gonna do, I think the proper size is 27 millimeter. I don't have one, but if I can get this nut off without destroying it, I'll go over to the parts store and pick one up and then we'll have it for when we put it back together. So we're gonna put this on nuclear. And we're just going to just kind of easy does it get it off of here. 
because this bolt's been torqued in place or this nut's been torqued in place since 1989 so you do the math and put the socket on my impact we're going to just kind of easy does it because of the fact it's loose on here i don't want to round off my nut here we're just going to take it nice and careful though everything on there don't take it off till you're ready to pull that radius arm out because otherwise if you don't have a book you're going to forget your rotation here's our nut came off pretty easy um there's nothing in the instruction that says about discarding this nut so you can still reuse it as long as your corners still look good if your truck if the corners are rounded in any way just as a rule, I always replace these. If they look good like this one does, and it's not too badly rusted, go ahead and reuse it. So we got our nut loose. All right, and like I said, I'll go over and get the right size socket for when we put it back on. Because I believe this bolt, or this has a torque of about 120 foot-pounds. So that's gonna be real fun. All right, now that we got that loose, we can finish jacking the truck up and getting the tire off. We got to work up front here. So let's go ahead and get you back on the pod and get the truck jacked up. All right, let's get you straightened back out where you were truck jacked up okay let's bring you in so we can see what's going on I'm aware of the brake hose I don't need any comments about it that's going to be in another video. We're going to replace this entire piece of line right here. So, let's see. We got to get our... Let's see. We can put our jack under there. Looks like our brakes are still good, so that's a good sign. So, let's get our jack in position. underneath the uh, there's a space between the spindle and the uh, bolt we're going after you want to get it in that space if you can you can also jack it up on the spindle if you're lucky enough okay now we can jack it the, we got the spring supported with the jack all right so let's see what we got to do here all right we got to disconnect the bolt for the spring or i mean the disconnect the bolt for the shock we can either go at it on the bolt on the lower end or if we're feeling lucky we can try to get it loose on the top mm, i'm feeling lucky i think i'm going to try to get the top loose okay we're ready to go now got my ratcheting wrench out just in case that would be better than trying to do it the other way we got to go the other way with it. I flip it over. Sometimes you can grab the shock and just kind of hold it still. Or like in this case, we got to clamp our vice grips to the top of it. And we can go ahead and so we can uh-huh 
That'll help. Ow. This is called the cross arm method right here. What I'm doing, and you can't see none of what I'm doing because I'm all the way up here. Anyway, sorry about that. We're gonna try to do better in this video with the camera angles. I'm gonna try my best. Since this is the 1500 subscriber video and you know, you guys been with me for this long, you deserve better camera angles, better action shots, you know, all the good stuff. You staring at my broder is not gonna solve the issue at hand. So, you know, I gotta kinda go with it here. Now, if you haven't changed your shocks yet and you're doing this job, this would be the perfect time to change your shocks. I did mine, oh, probably about nine or 10 years ago. Truck don't bounce any more than it would normally. Although my springs, as you can see, they're pretty tired. So we're gonna put new springs on this truck. And then, like I said earlier, I got one piece on the steering linkage to change, and then all the steering linkage will be done. And you might be asking yourself why I decided to go this way instead of the bottom bolt. Well, this way usually is easier. Usually you can spin this nut off pretty, pretty quickly, except in this case, it got a little bit difficult. here but uh, this nut's just about off of here so we'll take our vice grips off i think it'll i think at this point i can hold the uh i can hold that with my hand and finish spinning that nut off and then we'll set the nut over here with the other nut we're just nuts today everybody just all sorts of nuts and we'll just kind of hold it like that and just kind of finish spinning this off. Sometimes you got to do this. I'll show you another thing too while we're here. It's called uh, how, how strong your shocks are. This is how I determine whether or not I need to put a new set of shocks on something. Because normally your shock will go all the way to the top, okay? You've probably seen this done on a couple other channels, but uh, I'm gonna show you how, how it's done. So we got our shock right there, okay? Grab a hold of your shock and pull down on it, okay? Like that. See how fast it springs back up. See how that one's going back up? That's still a good shock. We'll be in good shape there. If you pull that down and it doesn't go back up or it comes down really easy, got a bad shock. This one, it's got some life left in it. So we're good there. All right, we got that part unhooked. We got to get into that nut now. So, knowing Ford and its infinite wisdom, we're probably going to have to do this and see if this uh, socket will fit. If it does, we're going to have to wiggle an extension in there or something. We're going to have to... Oh, look at that. We have a fit. Look at that. It's going to fit kind of offset because of the way that nut's positioned, but uh, I think... Well, let me see what the other side looks like. Cause we got to get that broke loose. I think. 
Um, I don't see that's an inch and an eighth. Fits it perfect. Well, let me go get a breaker bar and see if we can move that nut. Be right back. All right, we got our breaker bar here. I'm gonna pull you guys back so I don't hit you with my breaker bar here. Put this on here and we're just gonna kinda pick up a little bit so it doesn't pop out of the socket. We're just gonna kinda pull back on it. Maybe. All right, it's been a few days since I've been able to work on the truck because I have the business to do and everything, but uh, we've made some huge strides in this, uh, removing the nut on this shock or the spring right here. I was really fully prepared that if that did not come loose today, I was gonna take the rivets out of that bracket down there and just take the bracket off and just swap it out that way. But we got, um, let me show you how I did it. I had to spray it down. I got it hot a little bit and then uh, left it overnight with that free all. Thanks to my grandpa, I got a bunch of these big wrenches right here. This one's got an inch and an eighth on this end and an inch and a sixteenth. So I got it down in between the coil to where this is sitting as flat as you can get on it. Then uh, you might have noticed this pipe over here. This really long piece of exhaust pipe. This is two inch exhaust pipe. I put that on the end of that wrench and just went after it. I can see the nut moving. So uh, let's see if I can move it by hand without using that bar. Show you how I did this. Take your wrench and slide it up in between that coil. Locks onto here like that and then you can rotate it back. Then you can get on it and you just pull. See, now I can move it by hand. The reason you want to use a wrench and not a breaker bar is because the breaker bar on the end of it's got that little pin. And as tight as this was, I can guarantee that pin's going to break and you're going to destroy that breaker bar. So you want to go with a wrench because this is one solid piece of steel. You're not going to break this. If you do break it, then plan B is we cut the spring, pull the spring out, and then we cut the nut off the stud because, you know, we got to get spring loose to be able to get that radius bushing out. Now, if I have this much difficulty when we do the passenger side, I'm going to just get under here, cut those rivets out, take that brace off, switch it out under there that way because this is two days worth of work right here to get that nut to move. I don't have two days. This was supposed to have been a one day job, both sides. So I need to go get my gloves on so I can pull on that wrench. So let me get my gloves and uh, I'll get you in a better position where you can see what we're doing here. And uh, we'll keep on keeping on. Okay, let's get this uh, party started again. I was fully prepared to get as much room as I could to get to that nut today because you know, that nut has to come off. So we got our gloves on. We can go ahead and put our foot against our jack and just pull. See that? And hopefully the further up it goes, it'll loosen up. See, and you just row it like a boat. Get your, there you go. See that nut's coming right off. We're going to definitely clean those threads up on that stud because we're going to have to take this apart again when we do the springs. And we don't want this thing all jammed up. Got to get this thing in there just right. Oh, oh this is a lot better than it was. All right, then we can pull our wrench out. We might be able to get it with our in, with our socket in our let's send our socket down. Let's we'll send our socket down. All right, we're gonna get old blue in here. I got my uh, half to three eighths adapter inside the socket. We're gonna put old blue on there, and we're just gonna ratchet this puppy off of here. And then once we do, we'll get that spring out. 
and then uh, we should be able after we get the spring out to pull this uh, arm back get that radius bushing out of there of course there is a part of this where it said something about pulling this bolt down here and if we have to pull that bolt down there then we can pull that bolt because we already know it moves we had it moving well i didn't film it but i was working on it the other day so let's get old blue in here there we go i'm just kind of just get old blue on it Yeah, this thing shouldn't have been this difficult to get out, but considering that the truck has not been worked on, all of this is original right here. So this is 30 some years of, you know, rust. Here comes our nut. Sorry about that, guys. We're gonna, like I said earlier, we're going to make sure we clean these threads up pretty good before we uh, put this back together. There's our nut. We'll pull our socket back up through. That way we don't get it caught down in here. So the next step is we have to pull this spring out. And this spring's never been out of this truck, so... reach in here and we undo that spring uh, we're gonna oh yeah well threads look good yeah see how clean that looks there should have been no reason for that to be stuck unless it just had some rust jacking down inside the threads but we got our nut off and that's what we were coming for today all right we got to get this washer off this is your retaining washer for your spring this washer comes off remember how it goes because it has to go back that way set that over there and it looks like there's a spring perch bushing in here okay so now we're going to let the radius uh, ra the eye beam down and we're going to see if we can get this spring to come out you want to be careful on this part that spring can go any way it wants to and it happens to go to the way of your face you're gonna feel it for sure so we're gonna just let down on this jack nice and gentle we might be able to pop that out without having a pry bar on it yes, you need to put our jack under just for a second I think at this point we're going to pull this brake caliper. We're going to hang it off the uh, steering over here. Because I don't need any more tension on that, um, on that hose. So in case you're wondering how this caliper comes off, I'm about to show you. Now in the service information, it does mention something about, you know, if the line ain't long enough you got to take the caliper loose so that's what we're going to do to get the caliper off you got a couple uh keepers here so the way these work is there's like a little notch pushed up on them and it locks up against the caliper there's a rubber membrane inside that holds it out like that so how you would go about taking this apart is you take a screwdriver and you tap one side it'll push in and it'll push out the back you have one on top and bottom then you're going to grab this caliper pick it up hang it up wherever you need it to so i need to go get my uh, hangers through this hole right here in the frame i don't know if you can see that there's a hole right here in the frame i'm going to hang this caliper from it's right there where your steering box connects so let me go grab what i need to get this caliper off and then we'll be right back all right, so I'm going to show you how these brakes come apart. You take your screwdriver and you put it right here on the end of this pin right here and you tap it through. You got to go through the back with it. You 
see how it pushed down? After you get that side pushed down, you're gonna come to this other side and you're gonna do the same thing. And then you're gonna get in the center of it, because there's a good spot in the center you can get at. Just tap it through. Turn your screwdriver sideways, catch it on one of the corners, tap it right on through. And when it gets to a certain point, you can grab it, pull it out. You see how this is designed with that rubber in the center? Every time you do a set of bricks, you want to check this rubber for any kind of uh, uh, cracks or splits or anything like that. This one's in really good shape because I think I replaced these last time I did the brakes on this truck. Also, these will tend to rust in here, so you want to make sure that, you know, if there's any rust on it, as long as the rubber's still good, you can go ahead and clean that rust off. Uh, you can put brake grease in here if you want to to kind of aid this. But your goal is when you push this back through, when you get to this point, that's when you stop hitting it with the hammer. And they sell those at the hard at the parts store. You got one in the bottom too you gotta get. So we gotta get that bottom one out. Let's see if I can get down here so you can see the bottom. You can do it the same way on the bottom. Type of lubricant in there that'll slide this out real easy but usually when your screwdriver gets stuck you can just grab it and pull it back out and uh, this one see this is one that uh, probably should be replaced because you got now i don't know that looks like just uh brake brake residue in there yeah that's all that is that's not rubber that's actually that is nope see there it is right there once in a while the bottom one will get dirty so you gotta just clean it up and then you take your screwdriver and you put it in the top here and you pry this away from the caliper or away from the rotor. I've never shown brake systems on this truck, so this is probably a bonus footage for you guys that was wondering how these brakes come off. You gotta get in here and you just gotta find a spot and you gotta pry back on your brake caliper like that these usually come back pretty easy see i've done brakes on this truck years ago sometimes you got to be careful with this because uh, your pad will sometimes get stuck to the rotor this one's not stuck to the rotor it's just being difficult you just pick a caliper up pick it up off of there and then you take your hook run your hook through it and we're gonna hook it into this big hole right here I showed you earlier. Just like that, up and out of the way. Take your pad off and set it to the side. Now I got room to move this uh, knuckle down. So now we gotta, we gotta get this uh, spring free. So we're gonna take our crowbar, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna get that spring to free up. Okay. Drop our jack all the way down. And we can push down on this caliper. See that? See how we're moving this? This is what you want to do. And sometimes you're going to have to pull your jack back. In this case, we're going to have to pull our jack back. We might have to jack our truck up a little higher. If you're unable to stand on it, you can do it this way. We gotta get our spring to release. And this is how you do that. Get your crowbar in there and you pry up on it. You can pull your spring back away from your bolt. Being careful not to break your backing plate. And you can get your spring to come out like that that's your springs out see we got this bushing hot we tried to melt it okay 
So underneath this radius arm, there's a nut. That nut holds the radius arm to the vehicle. We're not gonna to be too concerned about this bushing right now because when we get ready to do the springs, cause we're putting springs on this truck, get ready to do the springs on this truck, we're gonna just change that bushing out as part of that job. So now we got our spring out, we got our thing pulled back. According to the book, we should be able to pull this thing back and get that radius arm out of that um, retainer down there. Can't see much through my viewfinder here. Yeah, see, it's right down in there. So we gotta be able to pull this back now. Now, let me see how we're gonna go about this. Because it says you're supposed to pry back on it with a pry bar. Be able to pull that radius bushing, radius arm out. But I think we're gonna do one better. Since we got it to where we're at, it says something about loosening up the radius arm pivot bolt, or they call it the axle pivot bolt. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Because if we undo the axle pivot bolt, then this thing's going to fall and that radius arm's gonna come out. Because I don't know of any spot you're supposed to put a crowbar on pry that out of there and I don't see how you're supposed to be able to do that the book says you're supposed to loosen up that bolt down there so I'm gonna fight with that and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what I did so stand by that's the bolt we're going after I already got the nut off it actually spun off pretty quickly so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wrench and we're gonna try to get that bolt to rock back and forth we can get that bolt out because we don't want to beat it out. We might have to in this case. Let me go get some, uh, get that 18 back on my impact and we're going to try to spin that. We can spin that out and we'll be in good shape. Sometimes that's what you got to do, rock it back and forth like that. That puppy's warm, so we're going to we're going to put some weight on our radius arm. So we got to jack this arm up so we can get this bolt to come out. We're going to try to zip this bolt out with the gun here. And you see how it's spinning now? This thing's warm, so I'm gonna try to grab it with a pair of gloves on. So, all right, we gotta. All right, so I'm gonna show you a trick. We're gonna get a crowbar, and we're gonna put the crowbar end on here like that. And I'm going to pry back on it, see if we can get it to come out that way. Or else I need to spray some stuff down inside there to kind of. Help that out a little bit. We got to do this on the pasture side too, so that'll be in that video. All right. This is why you have a crow's end on your crowbar. I'm going to show you. For doing stuff like this. You get on the back side of this, the head of this bolt right here. This suspension makes it difficult to do this. And you just kind of get it up against the thing there and you just kind of do that with it. And then you got to rotate this curl around. Get to the other side so you don't get it caught on stuff. And you just kind of just pull this bolt out. I might have to go up under the top like that. There's our radius arm bolt. Yeah, see? That's what we got. We'll clean it up before we put it back in, though. Don't worry about that part. The only thing holding this radius arm up is my jack. 
So we're gonna put you back over where the where our work area is and we're gonna let the jack down and we're gonna see some carnage because that's what we're all about here. We're all about the carnage. So let me zoom you back here so you're not like magnified a million and one times here. There we go. Alright, I'll pull you back a little bit more. You can see what we're about to do. Alright, we're going to let Jack down. It's going to drop that radius arm. And this thing's going to hit the dirt. Three, two, one. Now, not as dramatic as I was expecting it to be. But maybe we just got to um, grab this thing and kind of give it a pull. I think this is the pry bar part. Let me get my gloves on here. I'll get under there with the curl bar and I'll pry it out of the out of the uh, housing and then we'll be in good shape but we're just about there so let me center you in on the, watch that right there all right here we go and get up in here and just kind of you gotta get up in here somewhere right down on this bushing just gentle of course we don't want to break it any more than we already have and jack this up just a little bit kind of get into some. sometimes this thing gets wedged in there and you gotta move it around a little bit Try not to bend your steering components when you're doing this. There we go. All right, now we'll let the radius arm, we'll let the I-beam down. And we should have in about two seconds what we came for today. There we go. Not as dramatic as I was expecting, but you know, sometimes it's not about the drama, it's about getting the job done. So, all right. Now, if everything's right and proper in the world, which I believe it to be, I should be able to pick up this uh, rotor right here and move it towards the front of the truck and our radius arm should be out of the bushing like that see that that is what we came for everybody we have finally succeeded two days later while you're in here i'm gonna show you some other stuff you want to check this out make sure it's not uh off rounded that one looks pretty good um also i'm going to show you a little bit of a cheat if you don't want to go through all this work but you're willing to do a little bit of side work okay most of these fords most of these rangers this is your radius arm bracket okay this is the side face in the back of the truck they're bolted together right in here on the earlier trucks it's just one little piece over here in the corner on the later trucks it is too on some of these you have a crossbar like this and they're bolted in because you got two bolts here you got two bolts there but see this one's got rivets in it okay but if you're willing to do the extra work and you can get a cutter up in here and you can cut these rivet heads off punch out the rivet from the other side and get some hardware you don't even have to do what we just did you could just take those six bolts out take this arm off change it out that way slap it back on and you're done if you want to do the modification now will it weaken this at all by putting two extra bolts in it no because you're going to use grade a bolts and you're going to use your usual washers and your uh if you want to use lock nuts the uh, nylon nuts you can 
I wouldn't because if you got to take this back off, it makes it really hard. I would put some orange Loctite on the threads of the new hardware just to make sure that they didn't back out. But as long as you torque everything down to the same torque spec, you can get away with it. We don't have to worry about this and then, you know, if the bushing goes bad or the bracket gets broke or something like that, six bolts and you're home free. This one here, I can't really do that with because this side on the other side of this frame is my uh, RABS module or my rear, a rear ABS module. And I don't want to get that module hot and I am not pulling the brakes apart to do it. Now, if we want to do this on the passenger side, we can. But uh, on the driver's side, you're kind of limited to your abilities. So let's go ahead and get this bushing off of here so we can get this uh, back together. So you got to pull that off. There's your back bushing and then this washer comes off. Let me grab the hardware and we'll lay it out and we'll get this thing ready to put back together. Should go together fairly easy now that we got everything broke loose. So give me just a minute and we'll be right back. All right, we're going to put this together exactly how the book shows. So I'm going to put it together as I see it in the book. So we got our flat right there. And then we've got an inner insulator, which let me see what we got for an inner insulator. All right, so this is the inner insulator. It goes like, yep, that goes like this. That one don't fit, so it's probably this one. Yep, that's the one we want. And then we got a spacer that goes on the other side. So it'll go like that on the other side. And then I guess on that other side of that, it's gonna be an outer insulator which is going to look something like this. So we got our brace and then we got that and then we got a flat washer. Flat washer and then our bolt. So here's our flat washer. I'm guessing it goes like this then. Although I would probably be better off to do it this way, wouldn't I? that's how it shows on the book so I'll get it mounted and I'll show you what it looks like I just thought I should probably show you how to do this because this is part of the video all right so I got it dragged over into position I'm gonna jack the I-beam up and that should push that radius arm up through that bracket and then I'm gonna put the uh, spacer and the front bushing on and then the flat washer and then we'll put the nut on it if it works the way I think it should, that's how it's going to go. But then again, nothing ever goes the way I think it should. That's why you're here. So let's jack this arm up. Because we got to get this. Let's see if we can get this thing to go up a little bit more. And then I got to push that pushing in a little bit so you gotta jack the arm up and it should push that bushing forward Let's see if we can I don't know how much of this you oh you can see a whole lot more than I thought you could that's great all right and we gotta get it seat and then we're gonna put our hardware on but we're not going to tighten this up yet because we still got to get the i-beam back up into the truck so let me find the nut that i went and had size last night by the way this is an inch and 16 or inch and an eighth just like the one for the shock or the spring if you want to get a metric equivalent and because your nut it's going to feel loose if you're not comfortable with uh, using that inch and an eighth it's a 28 millimeter 
I'm going to tell you what. If you go to the auto parts store like I did, they sell a 28 millimeter socket, but it's 12 point, and you should never use those kind. Always use the uh, six point socket whenever whenever you do anything like this, because uh, you're not gonna round that off if you use a six point. So here's the rest of my spacer that goes on the back side. Well, it will as soon as I jack this up because we're not lined up completely. So I got to jack this up some more. This angle's got to go a little bit further straight. So I got to jack this I-beam up just a little bit more. And then that should be good enough for us to get in there and get that done. You got to watch this though because this thing wants to angle all goofy on you and you got to get this bushing in the uh, frame over here if you don't you're not going to get very far let me see if i can get that to go in there we go you gotta get that See that? Now we're able to jack this up. We can almost get the uh, bolt back in the radius on or the back in the bushing there for the all right. A lot of back and forth. So if you got a helper, today would be the day to call him. Say, hey, let's do these bushings on my truck so I can go out and drive it on my birthday. And they're going to be like, the hell are you talking about? So. All right. So now we got an issue because we don't have this in far enough. I don't have enough spot for my uh, nut. So we got to jack this up. And I got to shove that back. So that we got enough room for this nut to fit on. So I got to jack this up. Just a little bit. I don't know how they expect you to use a crowbar on this when there's no spot to put one but we figured it out didn't we people you just gotta be smarter than the bushing then you grab it and you put your foot up against something for leverage and you pull it forward and then you put your rest of your bushing on we don't have any room yet for a bolt. So we might have to use the shorter bushing. Because they make a, a wide and they make a short. And this one's going to need the short. Let me grab the short real quick. See, here's your spacer. Here's your other spacer. So depending on which spacer you need, we'll tell you which way this thing goes. See, this is actually a back bushing, so we don't need that one. You can put this front one on. You can put the spacer on it like that, see? That's how it goes. And then this fits right on just like that. And then we put our flat washer on. And put our nut on. But don't tighten this up, because we gotta get the uh, bolt back in over there. So once we get that bolt back in, we can come back over here and zip that on there. Actually, you want to wait to do that because uh, we still got to put our spring in. So let's go. I'll meet you on the other side. We'll put that bolt back in. Okay, now here comes the fun part because we got to get that bolt back in. If everybody did their job, then that hole, and it's not, that hole should be lined up. But I'm going to clean up my bolt real quick. I need to get the rust and crap out of this bolt so that we can be able to get this out again in the future. So I'm going to take some coil. I'm going to spray this bolt down and get all the rust out of it. 
you can use brake clean if you want you can also take a wire brush to it i figure coil will be good enough because you know at least this way when we get ready to put it back in it'll slide through pretty good and see make sure that you uh don't put your thing in the dirt you don't need to have your thing in the dirt so we got our we got our bolt or our nut on our radius arm we're going to take our trial bar we're going to just going to kind of look at where we're at on our radius arm and we're going to kind of just pry this arm down to where we can get it in in line with where we need it to be we got to I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and I'm going to stick it through this hole so this thing don't keep going up. And then we're going to use that screwdriver and we're going to try to line that hole up so we can get the bolt through it. All right, now I'm going to show you how this works with a Phillips screwdriver. You got to have your long one. Stick it through the hole like that. And then you got to get that bushing lined up. So you got to look through the hole and you got to see where your bushing sits. Sometimes you may have to do it like this where you put the screwdriver in the hole and then jack up the I-beam where you can move it around see how my see how that's lifting up it's supposed to it's we're lifting up the i-beam sometimes you got to lift the i-beam up so it'll line up all the way and you can get your bolt through because the i-beam i can get all the way through the other side now See, like that. And then what you want to do is you want to lower the jack down slowly. When you can push your screwdriver through the other side like that, it's perfect. Leave it alone. Pull your screwdriver back out. Do it very slowly though. Because that other side, it'll pop back up if you're not careful like it just did. So what you want to do at this point, before you pull that out, put your crowbar in place right here. One hand on the crowbar, pull your screwdriver out. Your hole's lined up, put your bolt through it. If you got dinosaur arms like I do, you might have to do a little bit of maneuvering. And get your bolt through. The best way to do that is just like that. And then what I like to do so that I don't get any rust jacking catching up on me. I'll start the impact up and I'll push it through with the impact. Like that. All right, so we're, we're not all the way through yet. We got a little bit of maneuvering to do on this back side. So we got to kind of take our pry bar well, actually, what we need to do now is we need to jack up the I-beam like we did before. And then we need to uh, see if we can get this thing to push through. Like that. And then we put our nut on the back side and we're done. So what we'll do is we'll spin our nut on like this. Flat side towards the I-beam. Just like it came off. And we'll take our ratchet. We'll put our ratchet up on there. Set the on. You can use a breaker bar if you prefer. And then we will see if we can get our nut locked on. Alright, let me 
and go ahead and tighten this bolt up. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can torque that to, I think it's 75 foot pounds if you prefer, but you want to just get it tight enough it's not going to fall off the truck. Now we got to go put our spring back in, so we'll get you back over there in just a minute. All right, we're going to zoom you back here to start this part off so you can see what we're doing. We're putting a spring back in. Get you some anti-seize. Copper is preferred, but all I have is aluminum. And you want to put some on these threads right here. Because we want to be able to get this nut back off in the future when we get the springs put on this truck. Because we're going to put new springs on this truck. So, all right. So to put spring back in, goes like this. You got to clock this spring. That's funny, clock spring. Anyway, um, we got to let this all the way down. Let it all the way down. get our spring back in all right so that's why you don't want to tighten that nut up just right away <clears throat> move your shock tower or move your shock all right so spring goes in like this we gotta aim the spring in thusly turn this thing a little bit so we can get down in there Push this down. So we got our spring out. We got our spring back in. We got it. Get it up on the perch there. Bring it down. And then you got to have something to help pull that down. So we're going to take our piece of pipe we used earlier for that the little operation we did on the spring bolt. We're gonna stick our pipe in there. And we're gonna get this I beam to drop down enough so we can get this spring back in there. See that? I gotta get a little bit more of this pipe down in there. And we can use the curl bar on this too if you prefer, but uh, oh, that's why I didn't drop them further. I gotta lower my jack down. All right, I'll lower my jack down. Ow! Beat myself in the head with this pipe too while I'm at it. Make sure your jack's all the way to the floor. Cause we're gonna have to push this all the way down all right so you can do this by yourself it's just a little bit of a headache all right and then we got to use our crowbar pry that spring up above that uh, piece right there because if we don't we got to jack the truck up so that the uh, arm will fall down far enough it's sometimes just easier to do it this way. Make sure we're good on our time. Right. So we're gonna take the crowbar, we're gonna put it on the spring, and we'll push down, and we'll push the spring up, and we get the spring to clock right. Push it up over that stud. Sometimes you want to put your curl like that. There it is. Springs in place. And we just got to wind it all up. Now there's a stop up here for your coil spring to sit on. You got to rotate your coil spring till you hit the stop. And I think that's it. Now we need to jack this up to where the I-beam is centered inside the spring. Then, if we need to, we can turn this cat, this uh, alignment bushing, to line up with the spring. So now we got to jack our I beam back up. All right, we got the spring centered. What you got to do is, uh, what I would do in the future, get you a paint stick, make you a paint mark on top of your spring per spring tower. Line that 
right up on the top like that and then that way when you put the spring back in you just rotate it to those lines up and then it'll fall in every single time we got our nut going back on our car our truck here we need to put a little bit more anti-seize on it just to make sure that we got enough I don't really like putting this stuff on my fingers, but you know, I'll take one for the team. Why not? Why not? It's Easter. You can do whatever you want on Easter, I guess. As long as you celebrate Jesus. And of course we do here. So, at least I do. Alright. Drop our socket down with our extension on it and we got to get our yeah we gotta let our jack down a little bit so we can get our uh, ratchet in there you gotta open up the gap so you can get your socket or your ratchet to the what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take it through the top we got a few threads we can turn on it from up top here. So I got to get it to go down a little bit further so that we can get on it with the... Uh... Actually, you know what? I might be able to do it like that for a minute. So let's pull apart. Let's get our extension off. There. Pull our extension off. By the way, be careful when you're prying on that I-beam, you don't mess up the backing, your dust shield on your rotor. And if you notice it is bent, bend it back. All right, I think we're good. We'll go ahead and we'll take our socket off. And we gotta jack our spring up so we can get the top of our shock back in. The reason people take the bottom of the shock off instead of the top is because this up here can be a pain in the butt. Depending on how long your shock's been on there, it could take you a while to get the thing back off. But uh, just remember, you're gonna have your uh, upper bushing and your flat sitting on top of your um, shock tower so you want to make sure that you grab those so you don't lose them all right now this spring we can go ahead and push this all the way up like that we're going to have to jack the truck up until this bushing touches the shock tower but before we get to well yeah we need to do that now because then we got to get our nut and our upper upper piece back on our shock and then we can tighten up that bushing and then we put the caliper back on the rotor and everything start putting this back together so just kind of keep an eye on that for me there try to show you what I was going to show you in the first video but for some reason my camera angle the first half of the video but my camera angle is screwed up we gotta get our 15 millimeter wrench which I'm gonna have to go get out of the shed so I'll be right back I gotta get my ratcheting wrench all right we're gonna put this uh, shock back together Set that back down on there like that. I put a little bit of croil on this off camera. Spin the nut down to you can't spin it no more and then take your ratcheting wrench and tighten it down. So. Like that. I'm not gonna bore you with this so I'm gonna just tighten that up. And then uh, when you tighten this down, make sure that's well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and this bolt tightened up you can do this with an impact but i want to get this thing smashed just right so we're going to use bertha on it here make 
sure we're pulling it the right way here. I think we're... Nope, that's the wrong way. We gotta go the other way with it. There we go. There's gonna be a third video in this 1400 subscriber series. That's what I'm calling it, 1400 subscriber. I'm at 1393 as of this morning and it's the uh, 30th of March. So we've been working on this thing for off and on for three days. So just, you know, in case you're keeping score at home, I'll go ahead and we'll tighten this down. All right, just want to, Now there is a torque spec to this too, but you don't want to torque it too tight because you'll crack this plastic spacer. You just want to get this thing about, I like to put a couple threads on it myself. Just make sure I got like two or three threads on the back side of it. That way, I know we're solid. And if it shudders while you're driving, tighten it up some more. But if you drive it and you go around that left turn or that right turn and you don't feel a shutter, you're done. But anyway, there's going to be a third video where we're actually going to get in the truck and we're going to do the drive. Because I am excited. This truck's been off the road way too long. This truck started my second life. Or starting over the second time. Alright, I think that's good enough. And that's what it looks like on the back side when it's done. We still got the passenger side to do. We got to put our caliper back on. Uh, I don't think I need to show you that. Since it's just the reverse of it coming back off. But you do want to clean out the alignment. Or your... Uh, you want to clean out these grooves on your, road, on your bracket. Make sure there's no dirt in them. And then put some brake grease in here and up in here. And then you want to do the same on the caliper mating surface, which is uh, up here. So I'm going to put the caliper back on and get the tire back on, get it torqued. So we're going to wrap this up here. And then we're going to come back in the next video and do the passenger side. In case you're wondering how that comes apart. So driver's side is done i am happy and uh, don't forget uh, we're doing our first live on april 10th at 5 p.m central time so if you're out on the east that's going to be six o'clock for you if you're in uh, utah or idaho or on the west uh, that's going to be four o'clock and if you're in california that's at three o'clock and if you're anywhere else, you're just going to have to do the calculations. So, we're going to do our first live. If it's raining, which usually happens on April 10th, because that's my birthday for some reason, it likes to rain. We'll be in the shed. We will do the live from the tool shed. So, uh, I'll see you on the pasture side. If you don't need to see that one, then I'll see you on the drive video. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Okay, we got our truck on the ground. Yeah, I'm wearing my other pudding shirt today. I got truck on the ground. We got to torque the wheels to 100 foot-pounds. Bounce the truck when it's sitting on the ground. And then check your nut on your radius arm. Uh, I had to turn mine about four more turns because it was loose. So at ride height, you want to bounce the truck a little bit and then tighten that up. Should be good to go. I just wanted to let you know about that last little bit here for the driver's side. So uh, we're going to work on the passenger side next, so we'll see you over there.